no one else is going to do do this for me nor is it a, a, of interest to anyone else you the viewer to do any any of this any of this in any of this for me such, such is the, the the difficulty and the struggle of evolution that uh, real individual uh, evolution of the true self is something that we must do must do for ourselves uh, and then in strange ways call it you know the mysterious ways of our father endlessness of God in heaven uh, help does come to us when there is real need and real giving of oneself based on this need for, for, uh, for um, call it acceptance acceptance of real help from God only knows where uh, for the sake of, of our true uh, individual self self evolution we're talking about the inner self uh, we're not talking about false egoism of the worldly self of the world of, of cause crusade agenda the, the long lines of, the, of cause and effect of the world outside and around us the kingdom of heaven is within us and it's, it's our individual work depending on us and the help that we do receive from our neighbor love your neighbor as yourself and from God and help does does come to us for, for, for these efforts as self-evolution and I wish to to read a little more, a little uh, a little more material about um, evolution in in search of the miraculous that there is uh, some material here, uh, what, what Gurdjieff calls uh, uh, um, the idea, the idea uh, uh, that it is necessary for us to, to speak an, an exact language, a language, a language, well, of Gurdjieff, a language of the fourth way, which we can agree on, and in this way help each other, help one another, uh, from a distance, as it were and or in our personal relations with each other, with one another. An, an exact language is, is needed to understand these ideas of, of true self, uh, individual, uh, real I uh, evolution. Uh, and, and the idea of exact speech, exact language. Uh, there's some material on it in chapter 31 of Bells Above's Tales. And uh, reading a little bit of that just for a moment here. Maybe my boy, uh, Bells Above, speaking to his grandson, Hassim, you do not, not yet know about the phenomenal absurdity found only on this ill-fated planet Earth, which consists in this for verbal intercourse, again thanks to the abnormal external conditions of their ordinary existence, there are as many different languages or dialects having nothing in common with each other as there are distinct independent groups into which they have gradually become divided, whereas on all other planets of our great universe where three brain beings breed, there is everywhere one common form of language, exact speech, exact language, what is called, quote unquote, um, sound manifesting mutual intercourse. Sound manifesting mutual intercourse. Follow me.
have to sit. You don't have to sit. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay. For an for a exact understanding, exact language is necessary. And the study of systems of ancient knowledge it begins with the study of a language which will make it possible to establish at once exactly what is being said, from what point of view, and in what connection. This new language contains hardly any new terms or a new nomenclature, but it bases the construction of speech upon a new principle, namely the principle of relativity. That is to say, it introduces relativity into all concepts and thus makes possible an accurate determination of the angle of thought for what precisely ordinary language lacks are expressions of relativity. When a man has mastered this language, then with its help, there can be transmitted and communicated to him a great deal of knowledge and information which cannot be transmitted in ordinary language even by, by using all possible scientific and philosophical terms. The fundamental property of, of this new, new language is that all ideas in it are constructed around one idea. That is, they are taken in their mutual uh, relationship from the point of view of one idea. This idea is the idea of evolution. Of course, not evolution in the sense of mechanical evolution, because such an evolution does not exist, but in the sense of a conscious and volitional evolution, which alone is possible. Everything in the world, from solar systems to man, and from man to Adam, either rises or descends, either evolves or degenerates, either develops or decays. But nothing evolves mechanically. Nothing evolves willy-nilly, involuntarily, mechanically, all by itself. Only degeneration and destruction proceed mechanically. That which cannot evolve consciously degenerates. Interesting idea. That which can, cannot evolve consciously, volitionally, degenerates. Uh, it's like he's saying here, one way or the other. Help from outside is possible only insofar as it is valued and accepted. Help from outside is possible only insofar as it is valued and accepted. Even if it is only by feeling in the beginning. And, and then there is what is called, what is called uh, uh, heart-mind, heart-mind uh, intuition. The language in which understanding is possible is constructed uh, upon the indication of the relation of the object under examination to the evolution possible for it, upon the indi indication of its place in the evolutionary ladder. For this purpose, many of our usual ideas 
are divided according to this the steps of this this evolution. 